Hi, right now in this video, I'm going to show you how to export your bilingual TXLF file into a bilingual Word document. So somebody can do some revision outside of WordFast and then you can import it back into WordFast in order to update your translation memory and generate a final target file. So let's look at this project right here. And you can see that the project is complete. Now there are two ways that I can export this bilingual file. Um, the simple and fast way is to just click on, uh, select the file and click on bilingual export. And we can save it somewhere on our computer. I'll just put it in the downloads folder for now. And that will create our file. Let me just get a, grab it right here, open it and show you what it looks like. You'll see that it has created an exported document, uh, sorry, a report. And also we have uh, the actual exported file. So here you have some instructions that are very important that people need to read. You may have tags that are indicated with these red markers and those need to maintain consistency or need to be kept where they are in the target uh, target segment. Make sure to only modify the target segment. Um, and as we go scroll down, we'll see that here is our translation. Terms that are coming from our glossary have been highlighted as well in this process and they appear as comments. And we could go ahead and make changes to this. So for example, this is the sheet name, uh, le nom de la feuille de calcul, and add something. And uh, if you do get a bunch of formatting errors that show up here, you can always go under review if that's bothering you and not show the formatting errors on the right hand side. Okay, so again, I said that that was one way that you could generate your target file, I'm sorry, your bilingual file. Um, and if you do it that way, it's going to be generated with the preferences that are indicated under general and your general preferences for getting a bilingual review export. So um, should we open the report? It actually did open the report on my computer. Um, should we exclude the notes column? We could have a set a third column there with notes. Uh, otherwise, that could be um, you could put in notes as comments. Do you want ch track changes to be turned on? If you're putting multiple files, do you want to export them as a single bilingual file? I could have selected three of them if I had three files in my project. And export as doc is, is typical. So those are my settings and that's how the file was uh, exported. Now you'll notice that there isn't anything mentioning about uh, glossaries. So glossaries are automatically exported in that file as uh, the terms that are in the glossary as uh, commented out uh, glossary terms. However, if you did not want to have glossary terms, let's say in that exported file, there is also another way that you can export the file as bilingual. And to do that, the first thing that I would recommend doing is just right clicking here and opening this location of this bilingual file. I think it makes it a little bit easier to have it in your um, Mac Finder or your Windows um, Explorer window. So you can do some drag and drop later. So there's my bilingual file right there. I just right click on it to find out where it is. And then I'm going to go into Quick Tools. Uh, sorry, that's not Quick Tools. Here's Quick Tools. And we have two Quick Tools. One's called Bilingual Export, the other one Bilingual Import. So obviously we're gonna start out with Bilingual Export. And here, the reason I opened up that window is because uh, earlier is I wanted to know where my bilingual file is. I can just drag and drop that into here. And that's the file that I'm going to export. And here is where I can decide, do I want to export it with a glossary or not? And in this case, I could select my glossary and I could also decide what I want as those, um, maybe this time special settings for this particular export. So do I wanna open the report? Um, also, I maybe can get rid of some of those instructions. We saw 
earlier on the file, let me just pull it back up again. We have a whole set of instructions right here. So these are boilerplate um, instructions, but maybe you don't want the colors section. So you could, you know, drop, I think it's under legend, um, this document. There's, let's see, you have, sorry, app name. So you could get rid of the app name in there and you could keep the instructions, get rid of the dot legend, um, this document, all this information you could, you could, take out of it as well. So you could just have, for example, the instructions, let's say. And we'll go ahead and we'll try it. So let's say, um, turn off track changes. Okay, bilingual review, export. There's also some other formats in here, but you're typically gonna want bilingual review export. And then you could choose a location. So I'm going to, um, if, if I do this one, it places them in the original files location. So let's just go ahead and see what happens here. And now I'll pull this up and we can see there's that same bilingual export, except this time it doesn't have the WordFast bilingual review. It just has the instructions. It doesn't have this color box. It doesn't have this document box. So that might be unnecessary information for people. And it doesn't have the glossary because I didn't choose a glossary for that. Okay. So two ways of exporting the file as bilingual. Now, once you've got it, either way is manageable, of course, and we're going to work with the one that I just updated here. Uh, so I added the CADQ so we can see that later. Um, so now we get to the importing the bilingual file. So we'll go to bilingual import. Unfortunately, there is no bilingual import from your project window here. So you really have to become familiar with quick tools um, in order to import the file back in. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add this bilingual file here. And so I stored that bilingual file in my uh, downloads folder. So there's my bilingual file, the one that I updated. Okay. And do I want to open the report? I want to accept the track changes probably. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. You might want to take the bilingual file if you have to validate those changes and accept them in the Word document first. And then um, if, or if you go through the Word document and you don't even have to accept them if you are happy with them, just leave them as they are and you can accept them when you're importing them in and reject the ones you don't want to before you import it in. Um, typically I wouldn't choose create merged file and uh, I have to select the TXLF file location. So that file location is uh, right here. Okay, so there's my bilingual file. And then I will import that and I get a report. My report showed up on my other screen. So I'll just drag it down into here and show it to you. And it just says, okay, we, a few things happened and one of the segments was modified and the calcul was added. So there's my bilingual import is done. Now, the only thing I have left to do is to finalize my project. I can clean it up update my translation memory and generate my final target file. But just to be sure, I can always open up my file, my bilingual WordFast file after this whole process is complete. And I can see now that it says a uh, de calcul has been added. And I actually see that in the, uh, the history of here that uh, the calcul John DiRico has added that. And that's, pretty much how you do bilingual export and import.